know, it's a blessing just to be here. You know, it's a blessing to get this type of opportunity to come out and, you know, show the world what I'm about. You know, uh, I got to take hats off. I appreciate, you know what I mean? I appreciate Javante Davis, you know, for even taking a fight. You know, I, I believe they fucked up by taking this fight. But, you know, I, I do appreciate the, you know, them giving me this opportunity to, you know, show the world what I'm about. You know, I'm just ready to go out and shock the world and do what I do, do what people think. The boxing world is buzzing with excitement as Gervonta Davis and Frank Martin come face to face ahead of their highly anticipated bout. Meanwhile, Errol Spence Jr. is backing Martin, predicting an upset against Tank. I see him getting his hand raised. I mean, I feel like he, he he's the most skilled, talented fighter that, that Tank ever fought. Like, it's one of those he can't, he can't take those early rounds off and feel like he's gonna come in the seven, eight round and hope for a knockout. I feel like Frank gonna dominate him first through 12th round and win a fight. I mean, Tank gonna put up a fight. You know, he's a great fighter, but I feel like <clears throat> Frank definitely gonna take it. Supporters are skeptical about Martin's chances given his recent struggles against Artem Heritunian and his scarcity of significant wins. Despite his strength and ambition, he faces a tough challenge in the Baltimore-born Tank Davis, who is basking in the glory of his seventh-round knockout win over Instagram sensation Ryan Garcia. After a one-month hiatus, it is uncertain how Davis will perform against Martin. On the other hand, Martin is expected to come out aggressively on June 15th, aiming to set a rapid pace and dominate the initial rounds. His strategy is to establish an unassailable lead against Davis, who is known for his slow starts. In Spence's view, Martin's best chance of winning hinges on increasing his punch volume and adding more power to his strikes. Tank has demonstrated a weakness against high-volume punchers, which isn't typically Martin's approach. Martin generally has a slower pace and tends to rely on power shots. Spence's strategy for Martin to start aggressively is spot on, but experiencing Tank's power in the initial rounds might make Martin reconsider and adopt a more cautious approach. This scenario is reminiscent of Ryan Garcia, who became apprehensive after Tank injured him in the second round last April. Spence remarked that while Tank would certainly put up a fight and acknowledged him as a great fighter, he believed that Frank would definitely win. He stated that Frank was the best fighter Tank had faced and that Tank would experience Frank's speed, strength, and power on fight night. Best fight he's gonna fight, he's gonna see the speed, he's gonna see the, the strength, he's gonna see the power that Frank brings to the table. Had Martin not performed so poorly in his recent bout against Artem Heritunian, fans might be more inclined to trust Spence's words. If Martin had delivered a standard performance against a formidable opponent like Shucker Stevenson, Andy Cruz, or Vasily Lomachenko, he would have regained their confidence. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened. Meanwhile, Frank Martin expresses his conviction that Durbanta Davis made a significant error in selecting him as the challenger for his WBA regular lightweight title defense. Martin is determined to make Tank regret this choice by delivering the 29-year-old his inaugural career defeat in their upcoming bout next month. For real progress to be made, fighters like Tank Davis need to face opponents who truly challenge their skills, with stacked undercards to amplify the excitement. It's baffling that Isaac Cruz stands out as the best name on Davis's record. He should have encountered far superior opponents by this point. Critics point fingers at Tank Davis's former promoters at Mayweather Promotions for shielding him from formidable opponents at 135 Wolves. However, this strategy is no longer sustainable, especially with PBC aiming to deliver compelling events on Prime Video PPV. Talking about his title shot next month against Davis, Martin said, I get the opportunity to show the world what I'm all about. I appreciate Gervonta Davis for even taking the fight. I believe they messed up by taking this fight, but I do appreciate them giving me this opportunity to show the world what I'm about. I'm just ready to go out and shock the world and do what people think I can do. After exchanging blows with Gervonta Davis previously, Frank Martin knows Davis' strengths well. In a recent interview, Martin described his sparring sessions with Davis as valuable. He praised Davis's precision, ability to stand his ground, and ferocious fighting style. However, Martin pointed out that Davis didn't pack the most powerful punch he's faced in his career. 
you think of a fight? Yeah, we could go. We, we could go. We could go. You know, I just fought the uh, title eliminator or whatever for the WBA, so we could go. What would that fight look like? It'll be a good fight. It'll be an explosive fight. Fast, two fast fighters, two strong explosive fighters. Uh, it'll be a dope, dominant fight. You know, yeah. explosive fight. It'll be an explosive fight. Do you feel like you guys being familiar with each other from sparring and whatnot? That that would play a role in the fight at all. Or? Nah, you know that was that was years ago. You know what I mean. So uh, he had come to the to the ring with some some different, and then you know vice versa. I Talking about his experience with Davis, Martin expressed that they did good work together, each holding their ground. He praised Davis for being sharp, noting that some fighters might struggle to keep up with his speed and reflexes. It was good work, Martin said. I held my own. He held his. Good experience. He's sharp. You got to have some power. You got to be able to hold your own in there, because Tank's a beast. When questioned about whether Davis was the toughest opponent he had encountered, Martin replied in the negative, citing a Mexican boxer named Pablo as the most formidable puncher he had spared against. Despite this, Martin acknowledged Davis' strength, commenting, Nah, it's a Mexican boxer I spared with. His name is Pablo. He got some power. He can crack. Good timing, sharp. On that note, Frank Martin's trainer, Derek James, expressed confidence in Martin's preparation. We have Frank Martin working out. Things have been said about the fight against Davis in June. It's a big deal. Fight Hub TV recently posted a short video on their YouTube shorts featuring Martin's training session. The video provided comfort to fans who might have been worried about their unbeaten champion's chances against the formidable Tank. While both fighters are talented, Tank has the advantage with a history of taking on tougher opponents, staying undefeated, and holding titles in three divisions. This poses a major challenge for Martin. Despite having faced numerous formidable opponents, this marks his initial chance to contend for a major league championship. Can he pose a threat to Tank? A recent training video showcased Martin's unwavering commitment to securing victory in the title bout, leaving fans hopeful that he will realize his ambition. However, that's not all. After seeing Tank's recent footage, Martin didn't back down. He promptly displayed his own muscular physique on his Instagram story, just like Tank did. Known as the Ghost, Martin shared a snapshot of his toned body right after hitting the gym. Boxing media quickly caught wind of the clip and spread it across social media platforms. Captioning the post, Frank Martin is looking ready. Following a hard-fought 12-round showdown in a closely contested lightweight elimination match, Martin emerged victorious. Now, the pressing question looms, is Frank Martin genuinely ready to take on the formidable Gervonta Davis? Martin confidently claims he has already left a lasting impression on Tank from their previous encounter. Amid the buzz building up to the highly anticipated face-off between Martin and Davis, Martin sees the spotlight in a one-on-one -on -one interview on Sigar Talk with Najee. When Najee probed into rumors about Martin sustaining an injury during a sparring session with Davis, Martin wasted no time refuting the allegation, firmly stating that no such mishap took place. Instead, Martin admitted he was responsible for Davis's injury during their sparring match. Once Davis got wind of Martin's bold claims, he didn't hesitate to set the record straight in a tweet that has since vanished, warning, keep on talking, I'll drop the footage. Despite Martin hinting that the sparring footage exists, it has yet to surface for public viewing. Amidst it all, promoter Eddie Hearn remains firm in his belief that Gervonta Davis would effortlessly clinch a triumph if he were to spar with Frank Martin. While Hearn acknowledges the potential of a Davis-Martin showdown, he is pragmatic about its pay-per-view prospects. Martin, currently ranked number two by the WBA, with an unblemished 18-0 record adorned with 12 knockouts, still dwells in the shadows of recognition. Drumming up buzz for this bout might prove challenging given Martin's relatively modest fame and fanbase. In response to the announcement of Gervonta Davis taking on Frank Martin in the ring, Eddie Hearn expressed his assurance to fight hype that Davis is poised to clinch a resounding win over Martin. It's all right, it's an easy fight for Tank. Frank Martin is a good little fighter. I don't think it's going to do mad numbers, but it's a good fight. 
Meanwhile, Calvin Ford, Davis's coach, along with his assistant Kenny Ellis, have been assigned the responsibility of studying Martin in preparation for the upcoming bout. It seems that Tank has heeded Martin's caution and is now putting in serious effort to counter him effectively. Alice revealed that he has begun scrutinizing Martin's videos to gauge his responses to impactful blows to his head. Phase 1. Up early studying Frank Martin's skull. He has a very thin zygomatic bone and a thin muscle layer. There's a very high maxillary sinus. Man, oh man, he's a good kid with a good team though, no disrespect. Martin's impending peril highlights how well Ford and Ellis have prepared Davis for his next bouts. I want to fight him a little bit. Martin, do fight him. He's going to be off balance at times because he's not that type of fight. During a recent conversation with premier boxing champions, Kenny Ellis conveyed his unwavering devotion to the sport, underscoring his passion for nurturing the development of aspiring young athletes. Ellis said, It rips you apart because you know you can't save them all, but it doesn't stop Calvin and me from thinking we can't save them all. You have people out here robbing people, they run across them again and they get shot. People are killing people for no reason. Today's generation deals with things differently than when I was their age. Amidst these reflections, Emmanuel Rodriguez, the Puerto Rican pugilist, offered a perceptive analysis of the imminent match between Frank Martin and Gervonta Davis, blending excitement with a dash of uncertainty regarding its outcome. He astutely acknowledged the challenge of predicting the fight, highlighting Martin and Davis's contrasting experience levels. Experience in boxing isn't just tallied by fights, but forged in the heat of the gym, the grind of sparring, and the crucible of pressure. It's in these arenas that a fighter truly evolves, Rodriguez noted. He emphasized that experience isn't solely gained from real combat encounters, but also from dedicated gym workouts, rigorous sparring sessions, and the ability to thrive under pressure and in challenging environments. These elements play crucial roles in a fighter's development. Power in the ring is a game changer, Rodriguez added, and Davis's knockout prowess is undeniable. But it's the mastery over weaknesses that often decides the fate of the bout. Rodriguez highlighted Davis's ability to deliver knockout punches to his opponents, underscoring his fearsome power as a noteworthy asset. Uh, Frank doesn't have the experience that I know of. But like I said a little early in the video, um, you don't gain experience inside a ring if you know how to control just the atmosphere and the whole pressure of the fans. Then and that's basically the, experience, the only experience you can get. Uh, fans, you really get that in the gym, you know, training sections, smart partners, and that's where you actually get that type of experience, but, um, I don't know, man, Javante got that power punch to knock any- However, he also pointed out certain flaws in Davis's technique, especially his difficulty with managing jabs and maintaining distance, apparent in fights with Rolando Romero and others. According to Rodriguez, Davis's struggle with jabs and distance is an actual heel that could tilt the scales if not addressed. Despite this, Rodriguez leaned in favor of Davis, giving him a 60-40th edge in the match. He highlighted the significance of a southpaw against southpaw clash, noting its potential to reveal genuine skill. Rodriguez commended Davis for his outstanding boxing prowess, recalling his performances in national contests and prestigious tournaments, showcasing not only power but agility, footwork, and strategic counterpunching. He hinted that Davis might rely too much on physical strength, not fully displaying his skill range. It's also, you don't like when they jab him and keep him at bay. I've seen it with Rudy Romero. Um, seen it with a couple of fighters, and, and again, he knocked out Rudy Romero. But before Rudy Romero got knocked out, Rudy Romero was, you know, throwing a jab and was a little frustrating, a little bit. Uh, First one, a little uh, Devontae Davis. So let's see, man. It's a close fight, bro. I have it edging out 60 40. On the other hand, Teddy Atlas delves deeply into the tactical aspects of the upcoming fight between Frank Martin and Gervonta Davis. Confirm what I will validate, what I will second is that he's a hell of a fighter. That, that he, he's, he's much more than what a lot of people thought he was, which was just a good puncher. He's a complete son of a gun, and not just physically, and technically. Atlas outlines a clear path to victory for Martin, emphasizing resilience and tactical acumen. 
he highlights Martin's ability to withstand pressure is crucial and emphasizes the importance of establishing rhythm early, avoiding Davis's aggression traps, and staying within his comfort zone. Atlas further explores Davis's dynamic fighting style, noting his combination of technical skill and raw power. While acknowledging Davis's dangerous predatory instincts, Atlas doesn't discount Martin's possibilities. He suggests that Martin's methodical approach could disrupt Davis's rhythm, especially if he effectively uses his jab for control. Atlas predicts a knockout victory for Davis in the middle rounds, but expects an intense battle testing both fighters' will and determination. He thinks like a fighter. He behaves like a fighter in that ring. He, he, he is patient when he has to be patient. He is always contained. And in their recent altercation, security intervened when Davis swatted Martin's hand aside after their initial clash. Davis remarked that Frank had been overly loud, attempting to establish dominance. He warned of repercussions for Frank on June 15th, stressing that none of Frank's associates could assist him. Expressing irritation at the growing tension, Davis planned to direct it at Frank, though he regretted Frank bearing the brunt of it. Davis eagerly anticipated returning to the ring after a prolonged absence, including stints in jail and under house arrest. The palpable friction between Martin and Davis intensified during a heated verbal showdown, with Martin celebrating his gritty underdog spirit and expressing determination to prove himself in the ring despite numerous career obstacles. However, Davis, known for his combative nature, quickly dominated the conversation, dismissing Martin's claims and asserting his intention to teach Martin a lesson in the ring, exemplifying the bravado of an undefeated champion. Yo, this Bruh, is two dogs. He's from this the two suburbs. It's two he dogs. From the suburbs. I, I ain't from no motherfucking suburbs. Don't got nothing you don't know me. You don't know me. But, about. but the little female crazy. he got. That's, that's the problem. But that little female he got, well, she probably around here somewhere. Davis's standing as a prominent figure in boxing traces back to his association with Floyd Mayweather Jr. He reminisced about being at the MGM during Mayweather's significant victory over Miguel Cotto in 2012. Now, Davis eagerly anticipates headlining at this prestigious venue once again, expressing gratitude for the opportunity. However, tensions escalated when Davis delved into Martin's background, leading to a heated exchange. Despite Davis's personal attacks, Martin remained resolute. The altercation intensified as both fighters defended their reputations fiercely. Yet Martin expressed gratitude for the chance to showcase his skills and vowed to prove himself in a future fight. Meanwhile, Mayweather praised Davis as a heavyweight hitter in the lightweight division contrasting opinions on Shukri Stevenson's defensive style despite his WDC 135 pounds championship. Critics argue that, aside from his controversial win over Edwin de los Santos last November, a match some claim Stevenson actually lost, he hasn't faced top-tier opponents yet. Mayweather noted that Gervonta Davis is likely the hardest hitter at 135 lulps, while Shukri Stevenson would undoubtedly be the most skilled fighter in that weight class. And just over the years, you can see I've always been positive, always said great things about him, always pushed him to be great. And, um, but over the years, it's constantly going on the internet, take a shot at Floyd. Take a shot at Floyd. Take a shot at Floyd. Uh, constantly be disrespectful. Constantly be disrespectful. When all I ever been was respectful to try to help this fighter um, go as far as he could possibly go. That's all I've.